I'm going to show you four spectacular presence based automations and one of them is so good I personally use it just about every day. Now at the end of this video I have something really special for you guys that's going to make setting up these automations mad simple. For those of you who are unfamiliar with ES presence it basically allows you to know who or what is in a room. Now, though it can only track things via Bluetooth, the versatility of present detection rivals that of millimeter wave sensors. So here are four automations you can use with ES Presence. Now this subflow takes a name which you can choose from a dropdown. When we dive deeper inside, we have the first two nodes dedicated to gathering the name of the person we want to find. The switch node checks to see if we've passed the person dynamically through the message.person. Otherwise, it will check if we pass it via the input box, which we defined here in this input section. Once we have the person, we dynamically construct the presence entity name and use it to find the state of that particular entity. All of my presence entities are named sensor.insertPerson sensor. As a result, I can easily find the information that I need dynamically just by inserting the person in that inserted area. The last node is a function node that uses sugar to convert the camel case response to a proper string. And then we return both the payload, which was already set by this state node, and this pretty message. This flow is a convenience method that makes answering the question, is someone home, very easy. When ES presence cannot detect anyone, it sets the status to not home. And because of this, we can take advantage of that within the subflow. We give this subflow two outputs, one for true, meaning that someone is home, and the other for false, meaning that no one is home. The subflow doesn't care who is home, only that a person is home. When the flow starts, it clears the payload, which can conflict with the two state nodes. But beyond that, each state node represents a person that we're trying to track. In this case, it's gonna be myself and my wife. Each node checks that ES presence does not say not home. And if that's true, or at least if one of it that is true, then the truth path will activate. However, if both are false, then the false path would activate. Essentially, we're looking at a uh, OR gate. Just as the name implies, this subflow will return true if a person is in the specified room. When we inspect the subflow, we see that each node will get the current location for each registered person and combine that with the payload into an array. The last node is a function node, which checks to see if the given room is in the list of rooms passed by the previous nodes. This one, this, this right here is my absolute favorite. Now I use this one consistently and I'm sure you guys are gonna use it a lot too. So let's go over this. The purpose of the subflow is to send a message to any of the Google speakers or any speakers that you guys may have that is in the same room that the specified user is in. Now, when we look at the settings for the subflow, we can see that it takes in a message and allows you to choose who should receive that message. And so over time, I did add more features to this, such as being able to send messages as text messages or sending copies of the messages to Kay. But the core of this is what you're gonna want. Now, here's how this works. We can ignore the first two nodes as in the future, I'm probably gonna be removing it soon, but let's start here. The normalized nodes grabs all of the information passed in from the input and places it in the message object. So that way we can access this easily later. Now, one of the values grabbed will be the name of the person that we wanna send the message to. However, if you look at the options, we're gonna see that one of them is all, which basically allows us to send the message to everyone. Now, choosing all will basically shortcut the finding the location part um, and pretty much jump to just sending the message to all devices. Otherwise, these three nodes will search for the location using the given name. Something clever that I have here is that the payload value is created by this input. 
When the user uses the input, they simply see the dropdown which has a bunch of pretty names, like for instance, Michael or Oriana, basically the pretty names. But in actuality, behind the scenes, it gets past the actual entity name. So the entity or the ES presence entity that represents me, that's what gets used behind the scenes. But at least from the user perspective, we see the pretty name, which is great. By the time it makes it to the find person location node, it will search for the correct person and return the location such as office, living room, and so on. Now, the next two nodes adjust the volume of the speakers at the given location. This may not seem like much, but what I found is that Typically, the speakers may all be at different volumes because in a specific room, you can change the volume independently of all the others. And when the automation runs, sometimes volume is either too low or too loud. So I have a helper that basically acts as a global volume setting that this utilizes. That way, everything can be fairly even and I can make sure that some things get heard when this node fires. I do have some updates coming to this node, but um, for the time being, this works pretty well. Something else I take advantage of is that the speakers have the location in its name. For instance, the Google speaker in the kitchen would have the entity ID of media underscore player dot kitchen underscore speaker. Reason being for this is that if you remember earlier on when we get the location, we get locations such as kitchen or master underscore bedroom and as a result we can dynamically access any speaker based on the location to make the system even more robust if a person is not home there or there's some kind of error or something happens then instead of just choosing a specific speaker uh, the system will essentially default to every speaker that's in the house and if the SMS option is selected then we basically send it as a text message instead however if the location is found then it will send the information to the designated speaker. And additionally, if K is enabled, it will send the message or a copy of that message along to K. And if you don't know who K is, uh, you can check uh, right here. You can check the link here and you can kind of see the AI chatbot that I created named K. Just about every video that you've seen on this channel that uses or that you've heard with Google speaking was done through this particular subflow. This automation, this automation, low-key slaps. Like, you don't understand how often I use it, and it is so freaking convenient. So my wife complained that Google was too loud or too noisy and very annoying because it would just broadcast everywhere for things that she could care less about and only really pertain to me. So after creating this, I saved my marriage it can save yours too. But real talk though, real talk, it's almost like having a personal butler just follow me around specifically. Something else I'm experimenting with is using the location data with GPT. Now, I have already played with it and I found out some pretty dope stuff. One of the things is that if you checked out my previous video about me letting K loose and kind of running amok in my house, one of the things that it would do was turn on and off lights in areas that I wasn't there. So if I were to give it a vague command, like uh, I can't see, then it would turn on, let's say lights in my daughter's room and I'm in the kitchen. And some of you suggested that we should give the AI some eyes. And by doing that, maybe it would be able to better suit my needs. And it worked, it worked. I used ES Presence, I kind of updated it, um, added it to GPT, added it to the list of entities. I did a quick video kind of highlighting the new update and it worked really well. I was super surprised. Additionally, if I ask, hey, where am I? It can tell me the specific room that I'm in. Even though that particular example worked, I don't know if there's loopholes or things that I haven't tested that doesn't work, but so far, so far based off of what I've seen, it works pretty well. If you wanna use these particular automations, check the link in the description and look for something called Chaperone. This is a GitHub page that I created that provides a collection of various automations that I currently use or currently experimenting with. I've gotten comments that some of the automations don't work. Um, and usually this happens because either A, the system that you're using is outdated, like some users reported that they simply needed to just update everything and everything worked fine. Or it just needs to be updated manually in the sense that the nodes that gets created for you um, based off of importing it needs to be manually updated to fit 
what's in your system. So it may be referencing entities and variables and things that don't exist for you, but exist for me, but requires you to update. So you're gonna have to go through the nodes and just make sure that everything is right. Uh, hopefully the majority of them should just work, but this is just, this because this is such a personal thing, this is just part of the course. But in any case, you can find these four automations that I talked about today on that page. You can copy the JSON, import it into your Node-RED environment, but again, do so at your own risk and at your own discretion. I'm not liable for anything, just, you know, do you. Anyways, that's it for this one. Let me know in the comments what automations you found the most useful using ES Presence, and if you have any automations that you use that I haven't talked about here. Okay, bye.